All right, welcome to another video on basic fiber optics. So as you're probably aware, light consists of many different wavelengths or colors or frequencies, depending on how you want to look at it. So in fiber optics, if you want to measure what kind of wavelengths are present inside of a, uh, a fiber and also how strong they are relative to each other, we need a device that can do that for us. And this is where we utilize what's called an optical spectrum analyzer. Essentially, this is a device that allows you to measure the uh, different frequencies of wavelengths that are present, as well as how strong they are. So let's see that in action. Here I have a handheld laser. I'm going to set its emission to 1310 nanometers. So you might expect that you're just going to get a single spike here around 1310, but let's actually see what happens. So I'm going to go to sweep, then press single. And we actually see a whole comb of outputs coming out here. So the reason is that this is kind of a, a very cheap laser, where essentially this consists of a, a small reflective cavity with some kind of medium inside that can emit light around this, um, like a broad range of wavelengths here. Then if you pass a current through the, the medium, it's going to emit light. It's going to bounce back and forth inside of the cavity. And only wavelengths that fit into the sort of the width of the cavity will actually be sort of coherently amplified and then emitted. And in an ideal laser, you don't have a single spike coming out. So that'd be one where we both have the, the cavity and the gain medium, but also a filter that only selects out one of them. But this one's just like a cheap handheld device, so they haven't bothered with the filter, so you just get this large comb coming out here. Right, that's actually kind of interesting. So we can, of course, also with this particular laser switch to other wavelengths, so let's maybe try that. So I'm going to switch to 1550, and if I sweep now, we can see that this light here at around 1510 has disappeared. So now let's adjust the center wavelength here. Let's go to, let's say, 15, uh, I don't know. 40, perhaps. Enter. And the stop wavelength, let's set that to 1560, and let's see what happens. So, we've got a sweep, and then we do a single sweep like so. And there we go, we also get a comb here. Let me actually move that slightly so I can actually go to center, and then use the knob over here to rotate this a little bit. Let's shift this to set the lower value, then sweep, and do a single one like so. There we go, that is pretty good. Okay, so now we can see what, uh, what kind of wavelengths are being emitted by this handheld laser device right here. And um, we can see that most of the power is actually located in a very small number of, um, of peaks right here. The ones down here still are visible on the screen, but remember this is a logarithmic scale, so if you take a step down by one sort of increment, one box here, that's a reduction by a factor of 10 in the, the total power. So it seems like these two contribute the most. And then this one contributes a little bit, and then the rest are actually like almost completely, completely next to all. All right, let's see if we can actually do some interesting measurements with this um, with this device. So, as we've seen in previous videos, you can have loss in optical fibers due to bending and whatnot. So let's actually see an example of the kind of loss in action. So maybe I'm going to zoom into one of these um, lines right here. So let's see, span. Let's reduce that to maybe five nanometers, and just sweep once. Okay, was that actually the center one? I'm not entirely sure of that. Let me just try one more time. Enter this, sweep, do a single. Oh, actually, it's this one over here. So let's shift this slightly. I'm going to turn the course mode off. So I should be able to go to a slightly higher wavelength now. Let's try this. That was a bit too much. Let's go down a bit. Do a single sweep. And there we go. Okay, so this one's the center one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five. So we actually want to move it just a little down now. So let's sweep this once, and that should be pretty much centered. Okay, so let's change the span and zoom in a little bit to one of these lines right here. I guess it doesn't really matter that much. We don't pick. Trying to get one of them to be centered. Maybe that is actually possible with this setting here. Nope, I guess not. Oh well. Let's uh, just zoom in a bit more then. Hmm. 
There we go. Let's do the tricks. So instead of using the knob, I just use the, the keypad to enter the uh, center wave length. So let me do that one more time. Let's do 1546.25 nanometers. And sweep once. That was a bit too much. Let's actually try to change that to 1546.75. Like so. There we go. Much better. Okay, so I just set this to auto sweep right now, or rather repeat, and there we go. Okay, so let's actually see what happens if we continue this a little bit. So let us press single here, there we go. And now we're going to go to the trace button, and we're going to fix A, and we're going to select trace B, and set it to uh, right and display, that's good. And then we can see sweep, do another sweep like this, and repeat it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is going to take this fiber here and just turn it. Let's see what happens. And if I turn it into a loop, you can see if we get one more attenuation. Now we can really see how this light has been attenuated. So remember, each of these blocks here is around 10, 10 decibels. So if I just adjust this much here, then we can see it drops by 10 decibels and another 10, so it's around 20 decibels. So in fact, for 100, I've decreased the power by twisted into a loop with this kind of radius here. And if you really wanted, you can even do like a sort of a chart of the loop radius and the attenuation that we get like this, and then maybe say something about the ability to of this fiber to guide light internally like so. Okay, let's see what else we can do with this. Just a moment. Now of course the real advantage of an optical spectrum analyzer, or an OSA as we also call it, call it is that you can measure multiple wavelengths and their individual strengths individually. So let's see what happens if I turn this loop here. So we should be able to see that all of the purple lines begin to to decrease, like so. Right. So this will also tell us if there's some kind of, um, let's say, wavelength dependent to the attenuation. Let's suppose that maybe this kind of bending is more um, strong for, let's say, uh, for higher wavelengths and lower ones then we'll be able to see that they get decreased much more than the ones than the ones over here. All right, let's actually take a look at how this type of device works on a microscopic level inside. Okay, so this little sketch here essentially shows the operational principle of an optical spectrum analyzer. Now, um, basically it consists of um, a light beam, so this is coming from the fiber, it's being sort of spread out by a lens or something, and this beam, let's assume for the moment it just contains a single wavelength, hits an array of uh, well, a grading essentially. So that's could be some kind of array of places of a piece of glass with sort of changes in the refractive index. Now, essentially, what happens is that each little change in the refractive index works as a little antenna that emits the light in all directions. And because all of these uh, waves here are sort of in sync, then you get a phenomenon called diffraction, where you only get strong interference that's constructive in very particular directions. So there's going to be a zeroth order here, a first order here, a second order here, and also negative one, two orders like like so. Now. If we only have a single wavelength coming in, then um, the width of the spot we create over here is going to depend on essentially the number of um, the number of lines in the grating right here. So if you have a larger grating like this, we're going to get a smaller individual spot for each one of each one of these. And as you saw on the um, the screen earlier, you notice that each one of these lines had a certain width to it, like so. It wasn't just like a single straight narrow line like this. And essentially, the reason is that. Even if you had a perfectly stable laser with no width to it, then because it, uh, it can only hit a finite number of grading, grading points right here, then it's going to be sort of smeared out when we detect it over here. So essentially what the OSA does is that it takes this beam coming in, then it has a, um, a photo detector that is just represented with a little sketch of an eye right here. And if you have a beam coming in, it simply measures the amount of power that's created in, let's say, the first order here. Now, what's interesting is that if you have a single wavelength coming in, it's going to create, let's say, this blue spot right here. But if you have a different wavelength as well inside of the beam, being that you have two different colors, then that other color is going to create an interference point slightly separated from, from this one. So in other words, in order to measure the whole spectrum, all the OSA needs to do is take the beam coming in and then record the amount of power that it has for this, um, for this particular orientation of the grating. Then you can simply rotate the grating slightly. And what's going to happen is that this blue spot here is going to shift to the left, and then the black one right here will come into view. Then the OSA can measure the power of this one, and then just rotate the grating a little bit more. And then it can measure the, say, the next color that comes into view and its strength. They can simply repeat that for all of the different um, 
different uh, different settings of the, the grading here, then of course the manufacturer has done a calibration knowing that with this particular orientation, then it's looking at this particular wavelength. And of course, I've explained this in sort of a step-by-step -step manner, but in reality it happens just continuously like this, and it just records the the, uh, the power observes. So that's essentially how it the OSINT ends up creating this spectrum of the light that's, that's coming in. All right, I guess that was it for now. I'll see you in the next video.